We're going to start with the nation as usual. 37 billion naira probe, ex minister gets EFCC's 72 hour ultimatum. Customs to meet 5.1 trillion naira revenue target. Uphold my mandate, Plato Governor urges Supreme Court. CBN acts dangles on COVID 19 loan defaulters. Federal government extends Julitide fair rebate till Sunday. NUC lists 58 varsities awarding illegal degrees. And FMC plans price crash for IVF births. Okay. So yes, the major headline. Major headline. Yes, as you know, we've been following the story of the alleged money laundering that was perpetrated <laughs> through the Ministry of um, uh, Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster and Management, and Social Development under the former minister Sadia Omar Farouk. Remember, she had been asked to see, go to the EFCC for interrogation, and we heard that she didn't um, go there. But then we're hearing from the spokesperson of the EFCC, Deadly Oyewale. He said that he got a letter from her. It was brought to them by her counsel. He was there physically explaining that she's been unwell and has asked for an extension of you know the deadline a three-week extension of the deadline um, but EFCC is saying that they are unable to do that for her that um, the way EFCC has been structured now is that you can come for your quiz interrogation and you can go back home on the same day and if she needs any medical help they have first-class facilities to provide for her uh, but this is something that has to um, be done immediately they said she didn't shun EFCC invitation it was because of her illness and then he also said that there's this um, amount of 37.1 billion that is that's been bandied around he said he cannot um, say for certain that this is the correct amount of information that is out there because they are still investigating still tracking funds that may even be more than that yeah. so efcc is not <clears throat> categorically saying that that is the amount so it looks like it's something that we people have come up with and so um We'll see if she'll be able to, you know, meet this deadline by today and um, go to see EFCC. Okay, so okay. I have good news from the FMC in Ebute Meta. Um, the chief medical director of the FMC had announced that while he was commissioning a new ward, he said he, he, the clinical building at the hospital, he said that they are looking to crash the price of the procedure for IVF in their hospital. I have been to that hospital. I have seen a lot of amendments. My father-in-law passed at the hospital, and I was more than impressed. It's been a very old medical center, and these developments that are happening are really commendable. IVF, of course, gives solutions to a lot of you know, waiting parents, but the affordability of it is always an issue. So they are looking at um, doing that at the hospital and crashing the price and making it more affordable for people to be able to do that. Um, um, Hoping they announce when it kicks off, when the crash price kicks off soon. Okay, so as a result of the suspension of degree certificates from the two francophone uh, countries, West African countries, after we know that an undercover journalist uh, detailed how he acquired a university degree within two months and also was enlisted for the National Youth Service Corps, the National Universities Commission has listed 58 illegal universities operating in Nigeria. They said that even those universities claiming to be affiliates of foreign universities in the country, a lot of them are culpable. And they also had nine degree mills, which are currently undergoing further investigations and court action as well. So the list here is a lot of the universities, the 58 of them, I'll just take a few. Uh, University of Accountancy and Management Studies operating anywhere in Nigeria, Christian Charity American University of Science and Technology hmm. or Anambra State. The full Christian or any course. of I'm telling yeah, you right. any <laughs> of <laughs> his other campuses, University of Industry, Yaba, Lagos, of and any of his other campuses, University of Applied Sciences and Management, Port Novo, Republic of Benin, and um, any campuses in Nigeria, Blacksmith University, Oka, a lot of them across all the states. I don't even think any state was exonerated here. You know, and they said uh, there were other universities, I think nine of them, 
that um, they just closed and they are investigating those ones. So they are trying as much as possible to um, recover illegal fees that they have collected from the students <coughs> and the subscribers of the university. So I would like that people go to the nation newspaper and read so that you're, you know the universities and I don't know if you fall into any of that mistake. Yeah. So the president has approved the extension of the Lilitide free train service to January 7th. The extension um, would enable more Nigerians to return home from their travels. It's sad that it's next tomorrow, Sunday. That's Sorry? Ending. Uh, January 7th is next tomorrow, Sunday. Sunday. Oh. That's a Sunday. Uh, uh, so no, don't go and say, they say January 7th. I didn't hear, I thought 27th. Mm. Seven, mm. So, tomorrow, oh, Sunday, next, yeah. tomorrow, Sunday. Sunday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the federal government had initially announced um, train service on all service routes, free train service, and 50% rebate on road transportation from December 21st to yesterday. But now they've actually extended it to... Otunla, which is on Sunday. GB is on Sunday here. January 7th. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. GB yeah. a house and change. GB a hair. <laughs> All right. Let's, go, uh, let's move on to the next paper, The Punch. <clears throat> EFCC combs Dangote headquarters for documents, probes, 51 firms. It's not too early for EFCC to know this work. <laughs> this January. Mm. Fate degrees, 10,900 Nigerians in Bene. At Togo Varsity's Lament. Banks borrow over 19. Trillion era from CBN's research report. Customs generate three trillion and I five trillion in 2024. Traders protest as Lagos government to approve market. Plato attacks survivors battle hunger in IDP camp. Foreign investment in manufacturing sector drops by 54%, says NBS. Okay, which story? Um, distress plateau attacks survivors battle hunger in IDP camp. So not only have they gone through the worst experience any person can go through? You know, on, on Christmas Eve, they are still suffering, you know, from that, which is um, the victims and the survivors of that attack are in camps. They say they're mostly in classrooms. That's children and parents. That's for those who have survived because there are orphans there. There are some who've lost just a mother or <coughs> um, a mother or a father, and they are all in these classrooms sleeping on the floor. Mm. Um, they say they cook just once a day and sometimes not at all. Um, there's this ex-person, uh, um, Pwajok Jane, she had gone to um, the communities in Bokos, uh, Mongol local government areas where these attacks happened and this is what she saw. Mm. There's, there's some people who, have been, who are in hospital but just really sad the condition these survivors are in. She says, in fact, when they went there, they met mostly the children because the parents had gone out to find food. So yes, the individual donations coming in, but not enough to, take you know, care. to really take care of people, um, the survivors in that, um, um, in the camp. So uh, I think this is a call out to all Nigerians. Government, of course. I know um, the um, governor's central, um, North these things got, um, <laughs> North, Central. North Central had come together and they had given 100 million to the victims. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we can do better. Um, the, gov the state government can do better also to just make sure that these people are given some form of dignity to be in <laughs> classrooms without food. It's not right, you know. Okay, let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. 